this is Alina. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is about flowering houseplant varieties and flowering varieties that you can grow outdoors and shade your patches. This is inspired by our own situation. We live in a condo that gets pretty minimal sunlight. We're lucky enough to get some in the afternoon, a little bit in the morning. We have a north facing patio that doesn't get much sunlight at all and then we have some east west and north facing windows nothing south facing so it's been really tricky finding those plants that we can grow in our situation with that kind of minimal light but here we go here is a list of 10 different flowering varieties that you can grow indoors plus a bonus one little Maya says hello by the way <laughs> so number one is african violets you may have had one of these in your collection or you have one now, these are very common, but did you know that you can grow them from seed? They are kind of tricky to grow, they have really, really tiny seeds, but they're a lot of fun and there are a lot of different varieties of African violets you can grow, so that kind of makes the hobby more fun. Jeff actually planted some little gems African violet seeds in our last video. If you haven't seen it, there is a link down in the bio, but there's a lot of fun in that video, so please check it out. So in terms of difficulty, the seeds are definitely advanced level and maybe intermediate to advanced level just because the seeds are so tiny and they require specific conditions to germinate. However, as plants African violets are very easy to care for and they're kind of known for that. They're a perfect beginner plant. Number two is begonias. So this is a fibrous begonia. We carry the seeds for this in our shop. It actually just finished flowering so it's looking a little bit dull but they flower very easily indoors. They don't generally need a lot of light. They're very low maintenance. The seeds are a little bit tricky to start because they are pellitted and they're quite small to start. As they grow they get easier to care for and in general they're very versatile plants. You can grow them outdoors, you can grow them indoors. This one bloomed without really any problems in our home indoors, so that just kind of goes to show you how simple they are. There are many different varieties of begonia. Some are known for their flowers, like this fibrous wax begonia, and some, like this ripon begonia, are just grown for their foliage, so you can really kind of have fun with this category. Number three is Tumibagia violacea, or Society Garlic. These are commonly grown as landscaping plants. We actually see them all the time here in California and they are also commonly grown as houseplants. They are related to chives. They might resemble them a little bit. They have flat leaves, but they also produce purple flowers. They look different, but they have a very nice smell and they actually can be used as an herb. In terms of difficulty, the germination is very easy and also care for the plant itself is very easy as well. So if you just need a beginner all around plant, Tulagia is perfect for you. Number four is Viola. These are very easy to germinate and they're very easy to care for as plants. They tend to grow quite small, so that makes them very easy and versatile. You can kind of shove them wherever you have a little bit of room. I have them in our patio garden and in our porch garden. I'm also trying to grow some indoors just because they're small and adorable and they make me so happy when I look at them. <laughs> so if you need a beginner variety of seed and plant to care for, these are great. So if you need a beginner variety of seed or plant to care for, you can try a viola as well. Number five is petunia. These are another very easy seed to germinate and plant to care for. They're one of my personal favorites. I grew a bunch of them last year. I had a whole planter in our patio garden just set aside for petunias and I also had a couple plants grow indoors and both of them flowered without really any issue. They're just very easy plants to grow. One thing to consider is they do sort of attract pests to themselves, in my experience, meaning aphids, but that makes them great as companion plants because if you grow them outdoors, for instance, they will attract a lot of the pests to themselves and those pests will then leave other plants alone. So try them out as a companion plant in your garden if you have one outdoors and try them out indoors as well. Number six is calendula. They are another great beginner variety. They're grown commonly in kitchen gardens and in outdoor gardens alike, and they are commonly grown as an herb for teas. So specifically, the flowers are collected and then the petals are dried out and the petals is what you will put in herbal teas. We actually have a whole jar of the petals still left over from last year because so many flowers bloomed for us, even in our low light conditions that we have in our patio garden and in our indoor garden. So they are really fun and really rewarding if you are looking for an indoor bloom that doesn't need too much light to stay. Number seven is nasturtiums, my personal favorite because again, I chose this plant. I thought you chose sunflowers. I chose sunflowers, nasturtiums, and snapdragons. Thank you. Anyways, they're very easy to germinate plant, they're very easy to grow, and they're very easy to care for. Basically kind of throw seeds in the ground and they kind of do their thing. If you have a windowsill or a wall planter, or even if you just want plants to flow around your entire area of your garden, they're the perfect seed for that. And they come, and our varieties at least, come in so many different colors. Give them a try. Number eight is snapdragons. These are a slightly more difficult seed to germinate because they are rather small, but otherwise in terms of just the conditions that the seeds need to germinate, 
pretty low key, very easy, and the plants are also very easy to care for. They're an adorable bushy flowering plant, so if you need something that's going to be small to medium size, snap dragons are perfect for that. They're also very, very colorful, so I'm going to try. Number nine is alyssums. These are a very easy seed to germinate, and you always know whenever there are alyssums nearby because they smell absolutely lovely. And I don't know how to describe the scent, it's very honey and sweet-like and it's kind of crazy to think that such a small flower produces such a beautiful smell. And they are such a small flower so they don't need a ton of space, which is another plus. Number 10 is Desert Rose. These are a lovely caudex succulent variety, which means they grow chunky little trunks <laughs> that are so funny to grow. Um, when you germinate the seeds, they are just, they look like little chunks, I don't know how else to describe it, but they actually grow into rather elegant looking plants and they're beautiful on their own without the flowers. The flowers just add a whole other dimension to the plant. The seeds are quite easy to germinate and the plants are rather easy to care for as well. However, they do need a little bit more light, so as much sunlight as you can provide for these plants, the better. They may not flower for you if you don't have enough light in your home, but like I said, they are beautiful without the flowers as well. Number 11 is the Dwarf Sunflower. These are Jeff's favorite flowers. Rockwell says hello, by the way. He just needs some cuddles now. But they, these are Jeff's favorite flowers and they germinate very, very easily. The one thing is the reason why they're a bonus plant is because they require a little bit more light than most of the other flowers on this list. They are a sunflower after all. So they're perfect if you have a south facing windowsill or you just have a part sun to full sun area in your outdoor garden. So to give you an example, we grew these in our porch garden area, which receives some afternoon sun. And even with that limited light, we got plants that were pretty tall and rather large blooms, which is very fun and impressive. But to give you an idea, we grew some in our porch garden last year, which received some afternoon light. That's not quite enough, I would say, to grow most sunflowers, but we still got plants that grew this tall and the blooms were about this big, which is pretty impressive and we're really excited to grow more this year. So that concludes our list of 10, well, 11 flowers that you can grow in your indoor garden or in a shady patch outdoors. Hopefully you found that helpful. The main tip I can give for growing flowering varieties indoors is just to provide as much light as possible, whether that's with grow lights or with sunlight by a sunny windowsill. And the reason for that is flowers take a lot of energy for the plant to produce. So the more energy you can give the plant by the sun for some light, the more blooms they will produce for you. Let me know if you've grown any of these flowering varieties in your indoor or outdoor garden, which are your favorites, and make sure to tag me on Instagram. The Instagram handle is plantflix. I love to see photos of your guys' houseplants and flowers and just whatever it is that you're growing right now. So please give a follow on there. Give us a like on this video. Subscribe, please. It helps so much. We're trying really, really hard with our YouTube. So leave a comment. Let us know what you think of this video, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye!